This is Ken with Marshall Trains. If you saw my last video, the January of 2022 layout update, you'll know that my layout is going through a little bit of a redesign. This is going to be the first in a series of videos where I take you through helping me go through the design and implementing it. In this video, I'd like to show you a few of the things that I want to make sure that I incorporate into the new design. So let's go ahead and take a look at those things. So one of the things that I've thought about including in my layout for a while now is a Ross double crossover, uh, which is, I believe, made up of pieces of number 11 turnouts, four of them, one, two, three, four, a number 11 crossover, and a couple of straight sections here in the middle. Um, but when I click away from here, you see that the cost is very prohibitive. And because of that, it's just not going to end up on my layout, at least for a very long time. But they give us some helpful information here in the description that will help me plan to be able to add it potentially in the future or maybe solve the problem in a different way. But right here in the description, they tell us that it's 32 inches long and center rail to center rail is a measurement of four and a half inches. So that gives us some very useful information to plan with. The problem with going with this double crossover is the initial layout, right? The 450 bucks and maybe another 30 to get it pre-wired, or if you get the, the switches, the, uh, the motors that turn the switches as well, significantly more money. But they have a couple of other products that might allow us to solve this crossover in a little different way. Instead of creating an X that crosses over all at one spot, you can create a couple of crossover areas uh, with some distance in between. And I'll show some video clips of that, uh, how I have sol solved that kind of on my current layout with issues, of course. Um, but first, let's take a look at a couple of products that Ross has here. So they have left and right turnouts that are 11 degrees and these will run you about 85 bucks a piece plus about seven dollars to get pre-wired for manual or significantly more each to get them with the motors. Um, I would probably go with just the pre-wired for manual and if at some point in the future I wanted a motorized uh, automatic switching I would do that later. Uh, so initially I would look at probably getting uh, the switches just pre-wired for manual turning. They have left and right, so here we have the left and right, they're the same uh, picture. Uh, one is number 101, one is number 100, uh, just here on their, their product catalog here online. The other thing that you probably need in order to accommodate this is a couple of these four and a half inch center returns for 11 degree turnouts. So those are about 15 bucks a piece. You're not really saving any money to do this piecemeal. Uh, all you're really doing is offsetting the cost and doing it over time. So uh, what I might be able to do is maybe just get one left and one right to initially to be able to create one switch over uh, and, and then another couple of switches later on to be able to create that switch back. So again, you can offset that cost over time. And I'm actually even thinking about initially in, in the plan not doing any turnouts or crossover at all, right? Just having two independent main loops and using the current Atlas switches that I do have that cause me problems for simple turnouts for things like industries or, or whatnot, um, maybe a small rail yard or something like that. Uh, things that I don't need to switch very often that are uh, less likely to cause me issues in day-to-day -day running. So this is the uh, potential solution I'm talking about in terms of how to use the, the uh, turnouts to create a separated crossover. So here I have one, two, 072 turnouts. Um, and down, further down the line, you can see way down there, uh, I have the same kind of setup. Now there's two problems with this setup with these particular switches is first of all, like I said, uh, with the Atlas switches, I'm having connectivity problems, uh, so they're not really working well, 
and on your double on your on your main line you don't really want to have those kinds of issues second of all uh, these are 072 uh, turnouts uh, and the issue that this creates versus the other solution is that the separation uh, from center rail to center rail is more than the four and a half inches that I'm shooting for to potentially eventually use uh, either the uh, the crossover the double crossover uh, that Ross offers or the other solution that I was talking about so between those two issues, these turnouts are going to be relegated, like I said, to uh, possibly just uh, offshoots to handle uh, industry or to handle a small yard. So as long as we're down here at the layout, let's take a look at some of the structures that I have. Uh, first up, we have Ali's uh, Tiki Bar. This is an MTH building. A little side shot here. I also have a bar, a bar, a building that uh, was modified uh, by a friend of mine, Bruce Gersh. Uh, right now, it doesn't have any sp uh, specific markings or anything like that. I'm thinking kind of like a, an apartment building, something like that in nature, or a duplex, you know, but probably like an apartment building, something like that. I also have UB Screaming DDS Family Dentistry. Next up, we have a Menards Hobby Shop. This is a Lionel Train uh, dealership. I'm thinking about changing up the sign on this a little bit to make it Marshall's Train, but trains. But we will see. Um, Got to come up with a design for the the building uh, front there if I'm going to try to attempt that. Uh, next up, we have the Davenport Department Store. Uh, this is a uh, Woodland Scenic building. Um, I really like this feature here. I don't know what they call this, but this uh, this multifaceted uh, piece right here on the end, the white piece, I really like whatever that style is called. It's pretty cool. Next up, we have another Menards building. This is a multi-business uh, building. We have J.R. Watkins, uh, which is a, a little retail store. We have the Red Owl, which is a grocery store, and we have Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe Attorneys at Law. The other guys are uh, lighting up some stogies, celebrating their latest win in court. Uh, another Woodland Scenics building here, Emilio's Italian Rest Restaurante. That's pretty cool. Um, another Menards building. You've probably seen this as Harrison's Hardware and Woodland Scenics line. Um, at one point, they were making buildings for Menards, I believe. And this one here is actually labeled Menards. And I thought that that was pretty cool and a little bit unique compared to all the others that you see that are labeled as Harrison's Hardware. Uh, here we have another Woodland Scenics building. Uh, this is... Boyd's Billiards and a barber shop on the bottom, and I believe that's Amalfi's uh, uh, ice cream shop down there as well. So, multi business. Let's move over here. We have a Plasticville Church. This uh, came from my father in law, his set uh, of stuff that he gave us here. Um, the bell I added, if it had one originally, it was missing. So I added one, and I added a little priest figure there in front. See him back here, get a little shot of that. Let's move over and look at some others I've got. Over here we have the MTH train station. Um, I have this in mind to be uh, for an area on the layout where I'm looking for it to be like excur excursion trains or kind of like a rail museum slash exc excursion rides. Uh, so it'd be kind of the, the train station that, that fills that need. If I flip over here to the other side, I've added uh, a Miller Ele Electrics uh, Union Station sign here on top. Uh, famously, that is on the Denver train station. Um, but I thought it was kind of cool to add here. Uh, might be the kind of thing that, you know, a, um, a, a rail museum or an excursion place might pick up and add to, to something that they 
have. So that's kind of what I did here. This is one of the first buildings I purchased. Actually, this is an MTH building. It's meant to be a brewery, uh, but really it could be any kind of factory. Um, I've got a brother-in-law who likes to homebrew beer and I'll probably be calling it or naming it after him after I get that installed on the layout. Here we have Herman's Sauerkraut. Uh, this is actually a building that uh, was from Menards. My mom was a huge sauerkraut fan. So when I saw it, I thought that would be pretty cool to pick up and find a place for it on the layout. So uh, in the district where I want to create um, the 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 uh, area for businesses uh you know i will industries i'll probably put the the brewery here and the sour crow factory of course i have the uh, partial roundhouse here that I, I showed in my layout update video um i'm now the steward of this after it passed a few through hands um it definitely will find a place somewhere in the layout probably in this that excursion train area kind of thing um slash rail museum uh i don't think i will ever get to the point where i will be uh spending the kind of money that it takes to get a turntable but i will definitely put it on there and uh kind of showcase it uh, as a feature of that area additionally i have a train uh facility building it opens up on both ends this again is a Menards building. It came with several different stickers that you could apply to the for the signage there. I'm a fan of Chicago Northwestern, so I chose that one. And this definitely will find a place on the layout as well. Uh, probably also in the rail museum kind of thing. I also have the Chippewa Valley Farm Supply building. This is another Menards building. This will find a spot out in the rural area somewhere. Uh, maybe between town and the museum slash scenic railway area, as well as a bank, which will definitely be featured in town somewhere. That's an MTH building. And finally here for uh, structures, we have a little coaling tower, which will definitely be in the uh, museum slash excursion area, right? Because uh, we'll be running some steam trains out of there and we'll need some place to coal, uh, add coal for those. Well, we're going to go back upstairs and on the computer in a couple of minutes here and look at some other structures that I'm looking to potentially add to the layout. Before I do, I want to show you some of the passenger sets that I like. As I mentioned in the last video, the layout update, I'm a big fan of passenger rail. I have a few uh, Union Pacific passenger cars, a Pullman, uh, an observation car. And this one right here is a, a special kind of car that has an open back. Um, this was used in reality in a, by a few different lines. Uh, they would run these along to inspect track. So the people that would inspect the track would sit here facing this back window. This car actually has a camera. Um, the software for it uh, was a little tricky, so I don't always uh, have the ability to get it to, to record. But when I do, it's pretty cool to have that view. Um, let's go down here and look on the shelves here. This first row is the Orient Express. Now, I, I have very limited uh, number of engines. I don't have engines that coincide with most of these passenger sets, but I still love them. Um, I certainly don't have any European steam, but I'm a big fan of the, the book, Murder on the Orient Express. So it was definitely something that I wanted to add and was very fortunate to get as a gift for Christmas one year. I also mentioned that I'm a big fan of Chicago Northwestern. This is a streamlined passenger set here in the green. I picked this up at, uh, I believe it's called Train Fest. It, that's in Milwaukee. Generally every year they have an event. I also have a Norfolk and, and Western heavyweight passenger set. Um, my step-grandfather on my dad's side actually worked for that line in Portsmouth, Ohio. He worked in the Roundhouse. Uh, we don't know exactly what kind of work he did, but obviously since 
it was in the family, I had to get something to go along that lines. And finally down here, uh, we have a uh, Amtrak Superliner set. And that's why I want to add an Amtrak station to the town. And we'll see that in just a couple minutes when we go upstairs. Oh, actually one more set down here is three cars from the Polar Express. These are actually heavyweight cars, scale cars. I also have a, a Lion Chief set with a number of cars. But I just wanted to kind of show you some of the uh, passenger cars that I have. And the idea is that th this is going to have a, a, a modern feel, but small town feel, so that I can run these excursions, right, and still run some modern uh, motive power and things like that if I choose to. Which, as I showed in the update video, I actually have a nice modern uh, locomotive. I'll flip over there and show you that real quick. So here on the top shelf is Norfolk Southern. Uh, honoring the first responders, this is the Lionel version. I believe it's an SD70. So I definitely need to be able to run this, and that's kind of why I'm going to have a mix of modern and uh, steam going on on my layout. But let's go ahead back onto the computer and take a look at some other structures that I'm interested in acquiring. So along with the structures that I already have, there are some others that I'd like to maybe be able to incorporate into the layout as well. Um, they're from Menards and from Woodland Scenics. These first few we're going to look at are from Menards. This first one is called the, uh, the, the Old Scale Valley Motors Car Dealership. If I click around here a little bit, we can take a look at the different angles. What I like about it is it has kind of a, a 50s feel to it. I'm a big fan of Art Deco. Um, and I like the idea that it comes with this panel truck. Uh, that can spin on top and that you can add your own vehicles uh, into the dealership yourself. Another is Ray's Wreckers. Um, Menards used to have a building called Wally's Gas Station, something like that. Um, I'd really rather prefer that, but um, the nice thing about this one is it's a piece that's meant really to, to, to go against the wall, uh, so it takes up less space. So this might be interesting as well. But if I can find Wally's uh, gas station, I think I'd prefer to have that. Um, Amtrak. So as we looked at downstairs um, in the layout uh, uh, room there, we saw that uh, some of the cars that I have, I have an Amtrak set. So uh, like I was explaining earlier, um, I kind of want to have this be a modern time but small town feel uh, so an Amtrak station would fit in there and the existing station I have as I mentioned earlier would go over in the section where I'd want to kind of have like a train museum uh, slash uh, scenic railway depot kind of thing um, but the Amtrak station could fit downtown um, you know, among the older buildings, just like a lot of small towns in America that have a mix of older buildings and new. Now, the Sprecher, the Sprecher factory, I'm probably uh, mispronouncing that, uh, the brewery here. Uh, I like the idea of this. They also make root beer, um, which my son is a big fan of. So if I got this, that would be why I'd uh, be interested in having it... Um, be, be there for the root beer aspect, but you know, I'm not one to turn down an adult beverage now and then as well. Finally, from Menards, we have uh, the v Veteran Sash Door Company. Uh, this I think would pair really cool with uh, another building we're going to look at in a little bit here called Morrison's Door Factory, right? So, um, Woodland Scenics has the, the Morrison Door Factory. Jim Morrison of the Doors, right? Uh, and I think Menards kind of played off that with Vetter, Eddie Vetter, uh, Sash and Door Company. So it'd be kind of cool to have both of those in town. 
uh, you know, competing businesses to a certain degree, uh, maybe opposite ends of town, that kind of thing. But it'd be kind of cool to have at least one, if not both. Moving over to Woodland Scenics, here we go, Morrison's Doors, right? So this has been on uh, many layouts over the years, right? You've probably seen this on several layouts on YouTube. Uh, it's been around for a while. Um, so it'd definitely be cool to have both of them. Um, they're kind of a different look and feel. This is much more of an industrial feel, right? Whereas the the, the Vetter and Sash Company, uh, Vetter, Vetter, Sash, and Door Company is uh, has a different, more rustic feel, I'd say. Next up would be the theater, and I really like the idea of the theater. Like I said, I like Art Deco. I like this time frame. Um, it's really pretty cool. The one thing I don't like about it is that the feature film here is Gone with the Wind. I am very much not a fan of that movie. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are, and that's fine. It's just not for me. Uh, if I could find a way to easily change this out to something else uh, in the that kind of era, the 50s, something like that, um, I would consider adding this for sure. Miss Molly's Diner is a, a relatively new item to Woodland Scenics line. I think this would be kind of cool on the outskirts of town, um, maybe near where the uh, you know, like the Rail Museum slash uh, Scenic Railway um, business would be, uh, you know, a place to catch a nice lunch or dinner after you've been out on a scenic ride. And finally, this is a dual business. This is a record shop and uh, Army Recruiting Station. Um, I just kind of like the idea of it, you know, kind of a, a, the small town feel, right? Old school record shop. Uh, and an army recruiting station, you know, what's more American than, than that kind of stuff. So pretty cool. Uh, it's weathered already, which, you know, if you, uh, if you like that or not, that's up to you, but I kind of like it. Uh, some buildings, you know, need to look a little weathered. Others could be like, like the refreshed and newer. So these are just the structures that I would think about potentially adding as well into the layout somewhere over time, right? They don't have to have them happen right away. Um, just some stuff that's out there right now that looks pretty cool. Thanks for following along today as we looked at some of the things that I want to make sure that I incorporate into the new design. If you want to make sure that you see all of these update videos and you're able to follow along with me, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate all of you.